Hey, good day, it's Prezzo here. I'm um, back in the shop today, which <laughs> at the moment is about all I can do. But uh, remember this thing, this is a wood cutting bandsaw that I converted to a metal cutting bandsaw and I made a playlist uh, of that process and you can check that out if you want to go back and see how that was done. But when I got this saw, it was only ever designed for cutting wood and the table that came with it was too light and too flimsy for cutting metal. And I knew at some point I would need to replace it with something stiffer and heavier. And to that end, I've decided to do away also with the tilting mechanism that was on the table because that led to a lot of instability as well. So I have, in my last video, made two castings. This one is going to bolt down to the top of the frame and this casting here is going to form the table. It's 12 millimeters thick, it's sort of recess underneath and it needs to be machined on top at least and we're going to cut a groove for a mitre fence in that as well. So this video is all about the machining processes to finish these two castings. So we're going to be hanging out by the milling machine and the lathe and the drilling machine uh, and we're going to do some finishing processes when we're done, get all this bolted together and then we're going to performance test it. So I'm going to invite you to hang out with me while we do all of that and let's get started. I've been able to mount that casting to the faceplate using 8mm countersunk screws, that way the screw heads are below the surface of the casting here and I can face that off and do the edge in one sitting. Uh, now everything's on the limit here, uh, it clears the bed of the lathe and yes I do have a gap piece in my lathe bed but I'm reluctant to take that out from what I understand once they're out you've got to put them back it can be difficult to get them realigned. So that's staying where it is. Table is big enough for what I want anyway. So what we'll do now is get this corner machined off and then we'll have a go at the facing. I'll be able to tell at that point whether I need to pack behind the casting just to align this face a bit better so we don't end up removing a lot of stock. That's pretty much cleaned up all those corners, but we'll give it one more pass. Okay, that's good. I just did a, an initial pass there, just to see how that was cleaning up, and I'm getting roughly three of the corners, looks like it might be a bit hollow in here and I'm missing this corner altogether but it looks like I'm only about oh, 0.4 of a mil off that surface so I think I'm going to take a slightly heavier cut and see how much of that cleans up and then if necessary I'll pack it a bit I just stopped cutting there because it's not touching anything in the centre there and you may have noticed that I sped the lathe up as I approached about the halfway point along the cut and I increased the feed as well. And that's not bad actually, there's just there's a little bit of a low spot there. It's machining really nicely. Uh, I love this new alloy. <laughs> it's way better to, to machine, there's no impurities in it, it's great. Okay, let's take a deeper cut and see if we can finish this in one more pass.
that hole did run out a bit because of an imperfection in the surface of the casting so I'm going to bore this uh, to be a tight fit on a piece of 12mm all thread. Just to complete the facing operation, I've flipped this on the face plate and I've got a piece of all thread which runs right through the centre of the spindle and here it is at the other end. So this is just a spigot that fits inside the spindle with a nut on both ends and I can bolt that hard against the face plate. And I've been around with an indicator and I've set the radius edge here be within a couple of hundreds at least. Uh, so really all I'm doing here is facing this so it doesn't really matter if it's not perfectly centered. Now just friction alone would probably drive that uh, without slipping but I think I'm going to put a single bolt or a nut or a stud or something here and that will stop this from spinning on the faceplate. So it's really just a driver. Uh, not bad, it's going to need another pass. There's my driving pin. Seemed to do the job. In fact, probably didn't even need that. Oh, there it is, both sides machined. I just flipped that back on the faceplate again to the original side and I've dialed in the hole so it's running true. And we're going to board this out now to take the throat plate. That's pretty good, so I'm going to bore that out to 38 diameter and it'll have a rebate, uh, 3 millimeters deep to take a replaceable throat plate. Just switched over to a high speed steel boring bar. At these speeds and the feed rates I'm using, I get a much better finish with that than the carbide. Okay, there's our counterbore, it's going to break the edges. Alrighty, I'll do the back one manually.
that's way better. I just did that final pass there because I knew that the table wasn't flat. Uh, when I machined this originally from this side, the back wasn't flat and the clamps uh, or the screws would have distorted that face when I machined it. Flipped it around to the other side, that made it reasonably accurate and then you really got to turn it a third time and recut this face. But that's looking much better. High speed steel does a much better job on this alloy. Okay, this can come off and we're going to machine the edges. I cut those four mounting lugs off with an angle grinder and I've bolted this to the biggest face plate that I've got. Unfortunately, it's not quite big enough to support the whole of that surface. But all I'm going to do here is just clean this up till the casting texture has gone. I want the edges to be square. I'm not particularly worried about getting the four edges exactly central from the, the whole feature in the center. It's really not that critical. I just went and deburred all of that and uh, really happy with the way it's turned out so far. Man, it's soft though. <laughs> You've got to be really careful when you're gripping it in the vise or, you know, clamping it and that sort of thing. I notice it's got some damage already. So what I need to do tomorrow is to cut the slot in the top of the table here for the mitre fence. Uh, there's some local thickening on the back of the casting and the slot will actually be on, on this side and we need to cut the clearance in for the, the blade so we can assemble a blade onto the saw and uh, drill a few mounting holes and we're nearly done with that so yeah it's looking good okay well here is my dilemma I need to be able to cut a slot in the table here to enable me to assemble the bandsaw blade uh, into the throat of the table top and I thought about you know using a hacksaw or <laughs> a, um, a grinding disc and in the end I thought, well, you know, the best way to do it is on the mill and using a horizontal arbor. Now I hate changing this over to horizontal milling and I'll tell you why. It means taking the vertical head off the machine. Now this is a, a vertical head that I made myself and here it is over here. And as you can see it's quite an assembly, it's very heavy and uh, it's top heavy as well. So in order to get it off you have to wrestle off this uh, overarm here and it sort of comes off in a bit of a rush and then he's sort of holding it trying to balance it and get it down somewhere i have actually got a winch up overhead there it is up there and uh, that enables me to take the weight while i get it off but just the same putting it back on again means you need to tram the head i had to take off my vise as well so that it has to be bolted back down and realigned but this is the right way to do it so that's what we're going to go with
Okay, so far so good. I'll just take a light cut there, just see how that's progressing. Seems to be all good, so I'll go a bit deeper. Well that went better than I thought actually, um, but it was like what two minutes work and uh, it's going to take another half an hour to put the vertical head back on. This marking out you can see here is for the slot for the mitre fence and you're probably saying why don't you cut that at the same time that you have the horizontal arb set up. And I have got this rather dodgy looking side and face cutter, but the diameter is so small that I'd have to get the arb down really close to the table and it's going to foul all the clamp bolts. So uh, it's just too complicated. I think I'll go back to vertical milling for that. So yeah, let's wrestle the head back on again. Well, here we are about an hour later with <laughs> the vertical head on, and I'm about to make the slot for this rather manky looking mitre fence. Uh, so we need a slot uh, 5 8 an inch wide, an eighth of an inch deep. Uh, it's not super critical. Uh, position's not super critical. So, uh, yeah, I'm just using the scribe lines as my marking out. He's a temporary Australian just went past on his motorbike. <laughs> that um, fit seems a little bit loose, so I'm going to take a slightly narrower pass and then we'll sneak up on it. Just did a uh, climb cut finish off. That uh, milling cut is not the best, uh, left a bit of a ragged finish, but that fit now is pretty right. It's a little bit on the tight side, but what I'll do is I'll draw file that rust off and uh, get that nice silky smooth fit. So I think we're done with all the milling on this, so let's get it off and have a close look. Well, there it is, and off camera I cleaned up that mitre fence. Uh, this was something that came from my father's workshop, and he was a bit of a notorious cheapskate. He probably picked this up out of the road somewhere. Uh, so I cleaned some of the rust off it. Next time you see it, it will be powder coated, and I'll do some zinc plating on the steel part, or parts. Also off camera I fitted this little steel keep plate to the table underneath, and this is to stop that slot from spreading apart or from flexing. And these are the original plastic screws that came with the other steel table. The, um, the fence itself, it's a, it's a lovely fit and purely by coincidence the end of the fence lines up exactly with the position of the blade and also purely by coincidence the steel tongue on the fence is exactly the right width for the table. I didn't set that up, that's just how it turned out. So uh, that's it, I think we're finished here. I must say I'm particularly impressed with the quality of the casting. That uh, it's not my doing, this is about getting the right alloy for this table. The one that I use here is called 601C. It's supposed to have excellent corrosion resistance, good machinability, and uh, it can be heat treated to a T6 spec, uh, but I'm not set up to do that. But I'm, I'm super happy with the way that's turned out. It looks like it's a machine from Billet, so that's, that's a good thing. Now, in the next video, I'm going to machine the casting which goes on the bandsaw itself. It's this one here. So I'm going to do all the milling and drilling and getting all that fitted, so join me for that. 
But as for this one, I'm just trying to think how I'm going to wind this up. Um, oh, I know, gratuitous hero shot.